girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hot Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. We were talking about some of the goings on in the car business. And that's once we're done with the recalls, that's what we do is you dig into the car business so you know what's going on. Because, you, you know, you really do need to know. It's, these are the cars you're driving, like I said. UAW President Gary Jones, here we go, announced he was taking a leave of absence as prosecutors working on the corruption scandal are zeroing in on possible charges against him. Oh, yeah. So far, there have been charges against 12 executives, resulting in 10 guilty pleas. Rory Campbell, the vice president of the UAW's Ford Motor Company Department, will be the interim acting president. Now, as we came to as we went to press here or came on the air, Eric handed me this this little tidbit that just today, this just happened. And this is a little ad ad lib to this uh, story. Federal prosecutors have now charged George Ashton, who headed the UAW's twenty eleven negotiations with General Motors and was on GM's board for three years with money laundering and wire fraud. Uh Uh-oh. Ashton, who retired from the UAW in 2014, is now the 13th person to be charged in the corruption scandal involving the misuse of union funds. According to prosecutors, Ashton conspired with Michael James and Jeffrey Pytrzak. We talked Michael Grimes and Jeffrey Pytrzak. We talked about these guys already. To devise a scheme to defraud UAW members and, joint, and, joint, and the jointly run UAW GM Center for Human Resources. Pytrzak and Grimes have pleaded guilty to charges related to the scandal, and, and, the, UN, and the union and the GM agreed in their recently co- ratified contract to shut down that Center for Human Resources and sell the building. I guess it's got bad memories. But that just broke. That broke this afternoon. So now there's 13 executives have been blasted. Oh, and yeah, on a side note, too, uh, as, <laughs> when they did this this, this uh, investigation, conspir- uh, one of the, all of the alleged conspirators, of all the al- alleged conspirators, Jones, the guy I told you about, Gary Jones, is then identified as UAW Official A. <laughs> that means, A means first, big time. And oh, yeah, the 12th person charged was a former aide to Jones, Edward Robinson. He's singing like a jaybird. Now Jones is, oh boy, this whole thing is coming undone. They are, you talk about a union coming undone. The fat cats, so these guys are, they've been, they've been, they've been going over, I don't want to say, I don't want to say it because it's not, I don't think you can say that on the air, so I'm not going to say it. But they, uh, they're not, been, they haven't been very nice to their rank and file, the workers. Speaking of the UAW, they have reached an agreement with Ford in the recent contract talks last week. Uh, last week, Wednesday, they inked a four-year contract that covers the automaker's roughly 55,000 hourly union workers across the country. That didn't take long. General Motors took a, a month or 40 days. Ford, was, they, they never even got the strike. The proposed deal includes a $6 billion investment that would create or retain more than 8,500 jobs. An engine plant in Detroit will close, but with no layoffs. Also included in the deal is $9,000 ratification bonus for full-time workers and $3,500 for temporary workers, with everyone getting the same raises as like in GM. So they're all getting uh, going up to 32 something an hour. As a side note, Ford Motor Company will retain their training center because they, they have, so far they haven't been picked up with, with the crookedness that they operate jointly with the UAW in downtown Detroit. That's unlike General Motors who has closed theirs as part of the agreement because cause it's where all bad things happen. <coughs> A lot of bad things happen. In case you care, Heinrich Fisker is back. This guy, you think I, you think I don't like Elon Musk? This guy. This guy is on my, he's number one on my list, Heinrich Fisker. You remember Heinrich? He used millions of Department of Energy grants, millions of dollars in Department of Energy grants 
to develop the Fisker Electric Automotive eh, some five or six years ago, only to file bankruptcy and sell the company to a Chinese firm. I'm telling you, I don't think he sold 100 cars. I don't, I don't even know if he sold 10, and I don't care. Fisker, a former design engineer for Aston Martin, makes him pre pretty good, and BMW, there you go, is now the CEO of another electric vehicle effort he calls Fisker Inc. I wonder who's going to sell this one to. Hmm. Fisker Inc. will unveil its first and only vehicle so far, called the Ocean, on January 4th. They got one car going for them. All Heinrich would say about pricing was, the future of mobility is about enjoying an electric vehicle without hassle, long-term commitment, and high cost of ownership. I got one question, all right? I just have one question for Heinrich. Where did you get the do-re-mi this time, boy? I don't get it. I don't think you're, I don't think you're legit. I don't think you're even close to legit, all right? I don't know. If, if he's got investors, they're, they're going to be just as, they're going to be just as schnookered as the Department of Energy was, okay? And he got billions. I mean, he, this guy got big dough. He put out, he, he also had a, a battery company. They went under, too. Everybody went under. <laughs> All right. New stuff, new technology. Toyota will unleash a little brother version of its quite popular RAV4 next month in Japan. The RAV4 is their really cool truck. They have named it the Rays, which will have a three-cylinder, one liter, one liter power plant. Three cylinder, one liter. It's a little, this is a little Rav4 now. This ain't a big Rav4. It's a little one. I just wonder, and I looked this, <laughs> I looked this up for, to make sure. I just wonder if Toyota people know that Rays is a Latvi Latvian word for worries or concerns. That's what it means in Latvian. <laughs> well, you know they're overseas. I mean, everybody's overseas there. They're all doing their thing. I don't know where Latvia is pretty close to Asia, ain't it? They should have called they should have called NAS. Alright. One <laughs> the Rays. One of the three scientists that received the Nobel Prize in science for their work with lithium ion batteries. A Mr. M. Stanley Whittingham, a professor at the State University of New York. Oh my good. He must be. He has gone on record as saying that in the near future. The lithium-ion batteries are going to be cheaper and more readily available to everyone. He knows this. The research we are doing will increase energy density and make them safe at the same time. Whoa, 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 wait. M. Stanley, buddy. They're not safe now? I mean, I've heard of fires. <laughs> are you telling me? What's going on here? Meanwhile, now, in China, the Chao Yang Wang group... <laughs> Chao Yang Wang, whoa, have developed a lithium ion battery that can recharge a potential 200 miles using temperature technology in just 10 minutes. It requires 400 kilowatts of energy, which would cause today's batteries to overheat and catch fire. So they use a, a temperature technology to shoot all that kilowatts in there and keep the battery temperature down. They have some kind of charging system that does that, and they can charge it in uh, they can char 10 minutes. They can put 200 miles back on your electric car in 10 minutes. That's, that's kind of cool, and I'll give you that. That is kind of cool, but I don't know. I, <laughs> I just don't know. You know, we have a list of cars, and I've got it here, and I want to read it to you. You're losing a certain amount of cars now in 2020. Say goodbye. There's a couple of them. Well, there's a bunch. There's more than a couple. A lot of them going bye-bye. These are goners for 2020. After 2020, there'll be no more. The Ford Flex. The cool-looking station wagon. I don't know. Infiniti Q70. Couldn't tell you. The Fiat 500 and 500E. Garbage. Oh, them junky cars. Aston Martin Vanquish? What, what, what would James Bond say about this? What's he going to drive in his next movie? The Buick LaCrosse? The Buick Cascada? The Audi A3 Cabriolet? That, that little thing, that's a, that's a roller skate. The smart car for two? That's not even a good roller skate, the smart car for two. 
the Cadillac XTS, uh, you can see the handwriting on the wall there. Infinity QX30. The Ferrari 488. Oh, my goodness. The Chevy Cruze. Chevrolet Cruze. You're out of here. BMW 3 Series GT. Goodbye. Hyundai Sonata or Santa Fe XL. Hyundai Santa Fe XL. I, I thought that was a pretty decent car. And here we go with the, the, today's our American automakers. Chevrolet Impala. Now, how many times are they going to get rid of the Impala and bring it back? Uh, the Ford Taurus. Gone again. That's the second or third time for that. Chevy Volt. Uh, you can get rid of that. I drove one. Oof. The Chevrolet Corvette C7. Now, I don't know the different C's and C styles of Corvette. But the, why just the C7? I don't know. The Ford Fiesta. Goodbye. Nissan 370Z Roadster. Oh, and poor, poor VW. The VW Golf and the VW Beetle. Da, 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 da. You're out of here. These are the cars. There's a lot of them. There's 20-some cars there. Gone for 2020. Hey, we got a phone call here. Let's t let's go. Let's talk on the car phones to somebody. Hey, you're on with the you're on with the car guy. Hello. John, for the blower, I got a racket like a the belt or the motor is going out or what? I don't. I can't. I didn't take it in to check it, but maybe you could give me an idea. Okay, now you're talking about the blower in the in the dash. Pardon? You're talking about the, the fan in the dash, the blower? Yeah. And it makes a racket. Yeah, I assume it's either coming from under the hood or in under the dashboard. Well, there, it depends on the vehicle. Some are under the hood, some are under the dash, but they're all they're all basically blowing into the dashboard. And you know, the problem you probably have, and I hate to say this, somebody might have dropped something down the defroster duct or something, a pen, a, a nickel, a dime, and it's rolling around in there, or... The squirrel cage on that motor is broke and rattling. Those hands are made. I thought maybe mice got in there. Well, there's a there's a there's a squirrel cage in there, and it's made of plastic, and it goes round and round real fast, high RPM, ten thousand RPM, whatever it is. And if it's got a crack in it, it it's definitely going to make a. It'll make noise that'll just scare the bejesus out of you. Yeah. The, uh, is it a big motor or what? You know, no, or? it's not a big deal. If it's just, if it's just, if it's just the squirrel cage, it's not that big, an expensive deal. If it is the whole motor and squirrel cage, eh, you're probably talking a couple hundred bucks, depending on how much labor yeah. is involved. Uh, okay, well, you you give me some help. Maybe I'll take it down to the Ford dealer and see if he can take it apart. Yeah, oh, they can take it apart. Trust me. Get get it fixed though, because winter's coming. I don't want you to freeze. Well, I know. I didn't have any air either because I turned the switch on and the racket came on. So it scares you, I didn't have it? air, but I better do it for the winter. It gets your attention, doesn't it? Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I, if you got grandkids, maybe one of them drops something down the vent. Got to be careful with that. That could be. Yeah. Thanks for calling, okay, buddy. Okay, George. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> you wouldn't believe stuff I found in in the dashboard. No, you wouldn't. Trust me, you would not believe the stuff that I have run into in a squirrel cage like that. Ooh. Name one, just uh, one. Uh, actually, no. Is there? Well, I name you the. I I found a bag of weed once. <laughs> it fell down the. Anything it, but that. Boss. It went down the. It went Anything down the vent. <laughs> I found a bag of weed. I wouldn't give it back to him either. <laughs> no. I said I'm gonna burn this. I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. I'm very. I'm violently anti-weed. Trust me. Anyway, that's not the worst thing I found, but some of it, I mean, I, whoa, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> what we're going to talk about real quick, and I got to tell you, if, if you're, a, if you're, you're the hunter-gatherer of your family, if you're, you know, the alpha male, and you go out and you, I take care of the cars. I buy the cars, and I pick out the cars that are best for you, blah, da, 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 which I, I do with my house. My wife, my wife, I never asked, she, she never, she never even asked me. If I want to change the color of the carpet or the drapes or whatever, she just does it. She wants new furniture, she does it. Because she knows I have, I have no taste. I have none. But when it comes to the automobile, she just says, well, whatever you bring me home, dear, because I'll drive it. Because she knows I know the best car out there I want to drive. 
I don't, I don't drive, trust me, I don't drive for kicks or fun. I use my car. It's a tool to me. And I buy what's, what's really good for me. Well, if you're the hunter-gatherer <clears throat> and you buy all these cars, say you buy, you buy your son a car or your daughter a car and they go off to college. When they come home, do you ever just say, hey, come on, let me, let's go for a ride in your car. Can I drive your car? Just to see if there's anything wrong. Because you got to remember, these young people today have not, didn't grow up the way we did. They didn't grow up out in the garage watching dad work on the car or a big brother working on the car. They didn't do that. They don't know anything about cars. And it's not important to them. And that's, good, that's fine. But somebody has to keep an eye on it. It may be making a horrible noise. It may have brakes grinding. How many times do I get a, a fellow in my car, in my shop, and he comes in and he says, hey, I got this bad noise in the car. And I, I ask him, I say, well, where, where's it coming from? What does it sound like? He goes, I don't know. I don't drive it. It's my wife's car. Well, you better drive it once in a while. Because what if, <laughs> what if something bad's going to happen? You, you know, just buying that car, you know, you, you had it checked out by your, by your tech, you, it's a solid, dependable vehicle, and I'm sure it was then, even if it was used. It's fine. But the last time you drove it or rode in it, take a good look. Do you ever check the fluids for them, check the maintenance that they're doing? Are they keeping up with the oil changes? Are they, you know, the tires? Are you, <laughs> tires aren't going bald, are they? I mean, cars wear. Things happen. New drivers are just learning those vehicles. I mean, do they even recognize or care about noises? Uh, vibrations, rattles, squeaks, growls, whining? You've been behind the wheel for 20 plus years. You realize these consequences. Protecting your investment, staying safe, go for a ride with them. Just go listen to it. You know, a lot of times these teenagers that are out there, they get a used, their dad gets them a used car, they're really cool, okay, I'm a senior in high school, I, I don't ever want to be without it. I can make all the noise it wants. He's not going to tell you because he can't be without that car. Not for 10 minutes. He can't have, you can't be taking my car in to get it fixed because I need it. That's just, Eric, you're not that far away from high school. You Did you have a car in high school? I had, yes, I did. I had a Dodge Intrepid. Okay. Did it make any noises? Uh, towards <laughs> me driving it to college, I did. It started making some noise. You know, yes. I, see, but they... The kids don't want to be without their car for one thing. And if they're going to college, they really do need their car, especially if they're going to college locally but not, you know, away. Or if they're away, they can probably have a campus where they can walk on, but they still got to get back and forth from the school to home. Yeah, see, I went to South Suburban College. so I, Which that, you had to drive. Right, I had to drive from the east side to South Suburban College. So I took uh, 94 coming down this way to get to South Suburban. At times, I took the street, but majority of the time, my driving was on the expressway from home to, to uh, South Suburban and back. Yeah, I went to South Suburban, too, but it was a one-room one wooden school. <laughs> 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 the South Holland Institute of Technology. That's mm -hmm. what we called it. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you, if you are the alpha male, if you're the hunter-gatherer, you're the boss, whatever, or you're the car person in your family, check them out. Don't just buy it and walk away and never touch it again. You got to you got to make sure cuz somebody'll get killed, somebody'll get hurt. You don't want that on your conscience. You don't want that to be the case. You oh, I should have I should have checked that car for you. It's too late now the wheel fell off.